Welcome back to the Crypto's Key Conversation. I'm going to try to be quick in this one. I got a lot I got to do, but I want to cover some updates with James K. Fallon in uh, Ripple vs. SCKs. Johnny Deaton has a couple different tweet threads and quick little two minute video that I want to play from Tim. And then I want to talk a little bit about uh, this breaking Solana Labs will launch a Web3 mobile phone. And then this concept of uh, IDGAF, or you can say IDGAF. And we're going to talk a little bit about that and why I'm bringing that up. So looking at CoinGecko, we're currently sitting under a trillion dollar mark cap. We're currently sitting at 972 billion, currently up 4.6% in the past 24 hours. Bitcoin sitting at 21,123, currently up 5.5%. Ethereum sitting at uh, 1,146, currently up almost 9%. XRP is sitting at point, uh, excuse me, at 33 cents, currently up uh, 3.7%. If we look at the biggest gainer here, we have Polygon Matic in the past 24 hours up 20. 4.1%, Thor chain up 22.3%, and so on. Coming over here to the Bitcoin Fair and Green Index, we're currently standing at 11, just like we were yesterday. So it's a lot better than a single digit, but we're still very low in the ex extreme fear range. And clearly, we've been in this bear market uh, part of you know our crypto, as you could say, overwhelming cycle, whatever the case is. Uh, clearly, there's been a lot of uh, different things going against not just this market, but all markets, but definitely been affecting the crypto market. And it doesn't help that we had the... Uh, Terra Luna and UST crash. Now we have the Celsius stuff. You know, you have blockchain companies like BlockFi, Voyager needing bailouts from Sam Bankman Freed's, uh, I think it's Alameda and, you know, FTX and all that stuff. So there's just so many different things going on. Plus, you have, inf you know, geopolitical stuff, inflation and drone power in the Fed and interest rate hiking and everything that's just going on. Just a lot of different things on top of like all the, the uh, I guess you could say the relative scams and scandals that happen within crypto, uh, you know, in, in a general sense. Moving on here, James K. Fallon has put up an update here. It says the SEC filed under seal its proposed redactions to the Ripple defendant's response to the SEC opposition to the Amici uh, motion to participate in the expert challenge. The SEC also publicly filed a letter explaining the proposed redaction. So you can come in here, uh, pause out, and kind of read uh, what was stated here. Uh, Jeremy Hogan had a, a great little insight now. He says, if only the SEC was this enthusiastic to protect re uh, retail XRP holders. So if we come down here, Cowboy uh, Cowboy Crypto right here put up a screenshot of Hester Pierce's uh, quote here. And obviously, Hester Pierce is like one of the, as we say, the good men and women within it comes to, you know, members of government, especially the SEC that have a, a different outlook on the crypto market. And right here it says, we now focus on disclosure of hot button matters outside of remit. We once sought to protect retail investors. We now rush to the aid of professional investors. So that literally goes hand in hand, kind of what Jeremy Hogan's saying. It's like, I wish, you know, they put in this much effort, you know, with them and their redactions, trying to slow roll things and delay things and protect, you know, obviously the scandal that's been taking place with this ETH gate and Ethereum free pass stuff. If they put, you know, just a, a fraction of that effort into protecting the so-called investors that they're set out to protect, it's going to be a total different ball game. So I 100% agree. Uh, moving on here, uh, Johnny Deaton had put up this video. We're going to take a listen. It's about two minutes, 20 seconds. It has uh, Liz Clayman. Uh, you have Charles Gasparino. And I want to say, um, I want to say Hester Pierce is in this one. I'm not sure. It says, I'm so glad to see Hester Pierce. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad to see Hester Pierce take off the gloves when addressing Gary Gensler. Uh, gross overreach. Great job to Charles Gasparino, Eleanor, Eleanor Terry, and Liz Clayman for reporting. So let's take a listen to this real quick. Chairman Gary Gensler is releasing the agency's list of rulemaking proposals and he is getting pushback already, including from crypto mom Hester Peirce, who, of course, is a very important person on the SEC. Is she not, Charlie? She's a Republican commissioner. Uh, we should point out that, that he's getting pushback on all these proposals, but particularly, particularly the, the climate stuff. I mean, how he wants companies to do these this enhanced, enhanced ex disclosure on how they're reducing their, their footprint. It is getting pushback from Republicans as well beyond the SEC's mandate. And there are other issues they have problems with, but we should put up first what Hester had to say. Again, okay. an SEC commissioner, Republican. Let's get a full screen of what she had to say. Just put it right up there because it's interesting. The agenda continues to shun issues of core of our mission in favor of shiny objects outside of our jurisdiction. We used to focus on companies' disclosures of economically material information, we now focus on disclosures of hot button matters outside our remit. That's their, their uh, authority. We once sought to protect retail investors. We now rush to aid professional investors. I mean, that's pretty tough stuff from inside. I've, I've not seen a commissioner come out against a chairman like that. Now, maybe even more problematic for Gary Gensler, if he wants to get this through, is what Senator Pat Toomey, a ranking Republican on the banking committee, had to say. Let's put up what Toomey 
uh, game. Uh, Elliot, uh, um, my, um, my producer, uh, Miss Terrett, put it right up there. <laughs> I'm very concerned that Gary Gensler is pushing the limits of the SEC's authority. I think this new proposed rule on climate disclosure is wide, wildly beyond what has ever been contemplated at the SEC's as their responsibility. Regulation by enforcement is a terrible approach. Uh, he was actually that latter part, he's talking about crypto. So there's, they're getting, he's got a lot of pushback on this. Now, what could the Republicans do? Um, not much now, okay, because they're in the minority. But once they get in the majority, I think you're going to see Gary Gensler become, you know, a, a, a target of the, uh, particularly if they get both the House and the Senate. He's going to be, they're going to be holding hearings on all this stuff. Uh, we should point out something really interesting. This is kind of... So if you haven't seen it, uh, Tim Tim always posts, you know, the you know these uh, segments within these uh, interviews that happens on Fox Business, and you know, relatively speaking to the Ripple versus SC stuff. So I highly recommend you go into Tim's Twitter. Make sure you follow him, and uh, make sure you go through the videos that he has posted up because it, it provides a lot of great information and great insight into kind of what's going on in different viewpoints of things. But uh, the overwhelming concept that you know I wanted to cover with that was you know what was stated down here is like you know. Uh, you, typically in the past we used to sought to protect retail investors but now we rush to aid the professional investors and that's just the sickening part about it moving on here um, uh, Johnny Deaton so we've been known uh, from a lot of people within the crypto community uh, crypto space and the people that you know as we say that you know the haters against Ripple and XRP in the community uh, as we've been known as these uh, uh, unfounded speculation and these conspiracy theorists in regards to this whole hashtag ETHgate scandal or this uh, Ethereum free pass stuff and all the shady stuff that's been happening behind closed doors. And I agree with jo what John De Johnny Deaton says. So he says, at this point, you are the conspiracy theorist. If you believe Hinman did not know anything about his law firm's association with ETH or the EEA, you probably also believe it's pure coincidence he meant uh, him and emailed uh, Joseph Lubin to set up the December 13, 2017 meeting, the first of several. Uh, Tag XRP says the SEC, the SEC's actions against the global population has caused harm and mistrust that will span multiple generations. They messed this up so bad. And I 100% agree. And, and quite honestly, yeah, if, if you, if you, with all the information that's out there, with them in their own words, them in, on video footage, them in documentation, for that's only for what surface. They're, you know, how, who knows how much more is hidden behind, you know, you know, closed door, lock and seal, whatever case is clearly the SEC is trying to protect themselves when it comes to these documents and these emails. But it's like for what can be surfaced and what we have brought up as a community, how can you like not lean more towards this isn't a conspiracy theory? This is real. There, there's no coincidences. All the world just stays as, you know, the digital asset investor says. It's crazy. Uh, right here it says breaking Solana Labs will launch a Web3 mobile phone. So I wanted to bring this up because you know we talk a lot about Ripple versus SC stuff, Ethereum stuff, Bitcoin stuff, and we never really get too deep into uh, you know all the other uh, digital assets out there in regards of like as we say um, uh, all coins or whatever. But uh, I think this is quite interesting. We're going to keep tabs on kind of what, what's going on with this Solana Labs launching a Web3 mobile phone. I wanted to uh, end on this right here, this I, I, IDGF. Okay, so I'm, I can't say the words or whatever, but I just did a quick Google search and it says the ability not to give a single F. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I've come across, since I've been investing in late 2017, all the way up to this point, I've come across more people that are neg like look negatively at the crypto space than positively. It's rare that I come across people that are at my level in regards of interest and uh, involvement within the crypto space, but I come across a lot of people that are, you know, they, they're just so stuck in their own ways. And this crazy thing is a lot of them don't even believe in what they believe in. They just say it because somebody else said it, you know, somebody else that they're looking up to, like they, they, they put little, little to no effort into actually researching or diving into what they're actually talking about. So uh, I'm bringing this up because I was on the basketball court. I played basketball with a lot of people throughout the week. And this one gentleman, we were having a conversation. I was kind of respectfully talking about, you know, what my interests were in, in regards of investing, kind of what I'm focused on. And he's a big real estate guy. And he has family that has, um, you know, uh, wealth. So they have generational wealth. So he's going to be inheriting a lot of money. And he's big into real estate. So that's kind of where he feels like he's going to spread his money. He was kind of asking me like, what, you know, what do I do? Uh, you know, what do I do for work? What's my plans for retirement and all this stuff. And one of my big things that I was talking about was like my interest and in my involvement in investing into the crypto space. And 
he kind of had like this uh, this big taken aback approach, and he kind of was kind of like had like a distaste. Uh, it was kind of like a distasteful conversation. Obviously, it was respect. We we know each other. We play ball together, uh, but. He literally just like, because he doesn't know anything about it, he's very ignorant. All he listens to is the headlines of the negativity. And he's so drowned into his own ways and what he knows and how his family acquired their wealth, which is totally fine. But he's so stuck into that world that he thinks that's the only way to obtain uh, to obtain generational wealth and financial freedom. And I was just kind of explaining just from my experiences alone and, you know, the experiences of others within the community that, you know, I've had the, the uh, privilege of, you know, having a discussion with or just learning from or, or, or just viewing, uh, you know, their information that, that they put out there. And I was just kind of letting them know everything and letting them know what I'm invested in and why I'm invested in it and what's my, you know, investing plan. Like how long am I planning on holding when I plan on selling and doing all these different things. And he still kind of was kind of like uh, had reservation and was on edge about what I was doing within the crypto space. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I really like the gentleman. We respect one another. He has his ways. And quite honestly, I'm open minded to a lot of things. I'm just highly focused, hyper focused on the crypto space because I see the writing on the wall. I see where this future is headed. So that's kind of what my focus is. And now when I hit my targets of, you know, starting to pull out profit and, and starting to tech to diversify into you know other asset classes or whatnot real estate and uh you know the regular stock market and whatever then that's when i'll do that thing but he's kind of like stuck in just real estate that this is the only way this is the only safest way and that's kind of like his thing and in my head like i walked away from the conversation like okay, i respect what you're saying but it's crazy how i can be open-minded and and you know listen to what you have to say take in what i like and discard what i don't but when i tell you Kind of after you ask me, I tell you kind of where I, where I'm at and how I envision things, and you don't even like kind of give me the time or day or accept what I'm saying. You just automatically think, oh, that's a scam, that's a Ponzi or whatever. And I came, you know, this all I can think about was like, I can care less what the hell you're talking about because you can be laughing right now. Yeah, you, you know, he was talking about, oh, your market's just been decimated and this happened and that happened. I go, well, it happens. Hey, I haven't sold anything. I've just been, I've been honestly accumulating with this dip. And a lot of people have been devastated, but I've been in this market long enough to know this is the time to accumulate. So all the resources I have available to accumulate, I'm going to accumulate. And at the end of the day, when this thing's said and done, whether it's two, three, five, ten years, whatever the case is, until I get to my targets, he can laugh as he can laugh as much as you want. But then when I'm laughing to the bank, when this thing's said and done for me in particular, for my family and myself. I'm going to be the one laughing and I'm not going to laugh at him. I'm going to continue to lend out my hand and help educate him if he's interested. But this is literally what I thought about. There's going to be people out there that have reservations and are going to think what you're doing is absolutely dumb and it makes no sense. And this is a scam and the government's never going to do this or that. This uh, the crypto market isn't going nowhere. It's going to zero. If you truly believe and you have high conviction on what you're investing in, whether it's the utility, the, the, uh, the builders behind the project, the company, whatever the case is. Do your research, do your due diligence, and invest smart. Uh, invest uh, within reason, and stay strong into your into what you believe in your convictions. Forget what your favorite influencer or with your mom and dad or your cousin or your best friend has to say. If they don't believe in what you believe in, and you truly believe in what you believe in, then do it until it fails, and it, it, you just ride ride with that. Stick with Plan A, and if all hell breaks loose and it fails, then you adjust. But if you have high conviction in this space like I do, you got to stand your ground and have this, I don't give up what you have to say mentality because I see the writing on the wall. And that's why I wanted to share this. I don't want to go too far into a rant, but I just want to let you know, there's a lot of negativity within, you know, uh, how people view our space, but we're so early. We know we, we, we have a high conviction on where this space is going. It's crazy. With all that may say, make sure you, you subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm excited to keep growing this thing. We're going to keep bringing you great content, update you on what's going on in the crypto community, especially when it comes to the Ripple versus XRP and SEC stuff, or excuse me, Ripple and XRP versus SEC stuff. Make sure you follow us at Twitter at CryptosKey1. Really appreciate you guys' support. With all that being said, stay strong out there. Be safe.